All right, peeps. On today's episode of the Kung Fu Genius, the KFG crew will be debunking beardy videos. Lots of gems. Too much beardy. And oh my God, what a f***ing bunch of bullshit. Let's get to it. And every day, I practice martial arts. <laughs> Yo, Dre, Mikey, Brendo, how you doing, men? <laughs> we're doing great, Seagull. Yes, we're, so, doing, we're doing good, Seagull. Uh, welcome, everyone, to another episode of the Kung Fu Genius. So okay. lately, we've done our, you know, our normal Patreon ask me anything episodes where you know our patreon supporters can ask me questions and i will answer them to the best of my ability which we love but today we're going to go back to the perpetual well of of content that is birdie bruce lee central hey everybody birdie Birdie here everybody birdie here uh so this is the the reason um, the reason i want to go uh and by the way beardy for those of you who are new to our podcast or maybe don't know about the uh steaming pile of dog shit that is Bruce Lee YouTube channels. Yes, so that are Bruce Beardy. Lee YouTube channels. Beardy is spelled B-E-E-R-D-Y. Do not recommend that you uh, subscribe to him. Uh, he has enough subscribers. Um, and if you do watch Beardy's videos, uh, log out of your normal oh, yes. YouTube account. Oh, yes. That way that shit doesn't constantly show up in your algorithm because it is pure, unadulterated dog shit. You will never get so, rid of it. Yes. One out of ten so, do not recommend. Oh, Beardy God. is a, uh, a YouTuber mm-hmm. uh, who doesn't show his face um, because he's the world's foremost Bruce Lee expert. So you can imagine if people even... He's the foremost Bruce Lee expert that no one knows his actual identity. Mm. And if people knew who he was, he would get mobbed in the streets because people are, oh, according to him, yeah. people are always asking him about Bruce oh, Lee. Yeah. All the experts. Right? All wow. the experts. He knows he all knows. the, he knows the yeah. people in the medical community. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Uh, he knows the secret of Bruce Lee's death. He knows oh, Bruce Lee's yes. secret training routines. He even reveals... Um, never before seen footage of Bruce Lee, like the 2009 Nokia commercial with the nunchucks and the ping pong, which is not Bruce Lee. But he's the first one to reveal that Bruce oh, Lee I footage. It. I have I never it. seen that. Yeah, it's amazing. Oh my it's god, incredible! And and it's legit. Like yeah. it's definitely oh, not yeah, a Nokia yeah. commercial. So, um, but all all jokes aside, uh, Beardy is a cock knuckle. Oh no! Uh, so all jokes aside, Beardy is someone who will take footage. Sometimes it's Bruce Lee footage. Oftentimes it's just fake nonsense. And sometimes he'll take a photo of Bruce Lee and then he'll go, let me tell you the story. And that's not his accent, but that's how I perceive it. <laughs> let me tell you the story about this photo here. And then he'll just completely spin no. a yarn and none. And, and it'll be, for example, someone like Dan Inosanto, mm-hmm. whom we all know as one of Bruce Lee's you know, most foremost students. And he'll say that because Dan Santo happened to be wearing a karate gi, he'll say this guy's Grandmaster Baxter. So he like he doesn't even know who the major players are in Bruce Lee's life, and he'll spin a yarn. What do you? I I, I you you say you, you do this accent, and it makes me wonder if he's like a country bumpkin of Europe, because yes. we can't figure out where he's from. Yes. Well, um, I from his accent, uh, he's some kind of European, mm-hmm. all right? I can say that without being canceled because I'm half German, by the yeah. way. Appalachian right? European. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Appalachian. So, um, uh, because his accent, I can't tell, it, it's potentially Dutch, could be Finnish, um, but there's some people out there like, no, bro, he's totally Asian. And it's like, no, you're watching videos about Bruce Lee Assuming the guy is Asian and you're hearing that, and that makes you a racist. Yo. So uh, no, there's, uh, he's not Asian Can at all. We, I would be surprised if he was. Can we also oh. talk about his MMA career? Oh, that's yes. right. Yes. Oh wow. So um, yes, for, for anyone who has gone down the Beardy rabbit hole, which I don't recommend, if you want to find out about Beardy, the best best place to find out about Beardy are the past videos I did about him. <laughs> um, <laughs> do not give that guy any more views. Um, in addition to being a foremost Bruce Lee, a self-proclaimed Bruce Lee expert, uh, he has 400-something thousand subscribers. Something like that, yeah. Uh, he also, in his bio, I don't know if it's still there, claims that his real name is Bernard McAllister, uh, which is a very suspicious name given his accent. Oh, yes. Uh, and uh, that he is a former, I think it was IFL or IFC IFC, I believe champion, it was. Uh, yes. Some MMA champion. He was a champion. Yeah, yeah. which then gives him the cred. All right. Okay. Now there is a website called SureDog.com, 
which is kind of like uh, what I am, what IMDb is for movies. Mm. Sherdog sure is for MMA fights and events. So if you ever want to look up a fighter's record, wow. look up what cards they fought, who fought whom, whatever. So everyone you go to Sherdog.com. Sure sure and it's not just the bigger ones like UFC or Bellator right. or one championship. It has even like a lot of the small local fights. Wow. And so Sherdog.com so sure is a pretty uh, uh, robust uh, resource, right? I did find uh, that there was some IFC event. Mm -hmm. um, I think it was the Iranian Fighting Championships. Mm -hmm. All right. IFC. And uh, guess who spent a number of hours looking at every IFC card on Sherdog to see if there was a Bernard McAllister that fought, let alone became champion, this fucking idiot right here. <laughs> yeah, um, um, never, you're getting. You're not, you're never getting those hours back. But I'm never getting those hours back. Thanks, Beardy. Uh, and, How many uh, hours did you? Take? There was no. There was no IFC uh, fighter uh, or champion by that name. As a matter of fact, and this might come as shocking, uh, most of the fighters on the Iranian fight championship cards had Arabic names. No. No, there was nothing even remotely close to a Bernard McAllister fighting there. Although, if there was, I think purely for the entertainment of saying, like, you know, you, you have someone very clearly of Iranian descent fighting Bernard McAllister in only one card where everyone else has, like, an Arabic or Iranian or Persian name, okay. uh, that would have just been hysterical. Can you imagine him walking in there and the crowd <laughs> reaction to his, uh, to his Irish, Irish ass yeah. or whatever? He wins right? the championship. <laughs> yes. Yeah. So, uh, uh, no. And then I also right. just looked to see if there was a Bernard McAllister at all uh -huh. that, like, that fought in any kind of MMA, and there was not. Uh, then I Googled it to see maybe it was like a smaller fighting championship. And I spent hours upon hours to make sure I did my due diligence. Damn it. Um, and by the way, even if there was a Bernard McAllister that, that, that fought, there would be no guarantee that this guy didn't just take the guy's name. Um, I would also think that if he was a real MMA fighter and a champion... Why would he then not want to like show himself on any of these videos? Yeah. Ah, but to be fair, he did show himself on one of the videos. You're it right. Just happened to be two different bodies. Yes. <laughs> so uh, if if you guys go back, uh, it's either season two or season three, and you watch uh, the, the first video we did on Beardy, uh, he uh, did one ridiculous video, and this is the type of content that Beardy does, where he will say that um, he trained like Bruce Lee for a year. Did you see that one? I didn't. Uh, it's, oh, it's amazing. It's epic. 16 hours a day, apparently. Yeah, yeah. yeah. He kept changing. He was like, I trained like Bruce Lee for eight hours a day. Then like a couple of sentences later, 10 hours a day. A couple of <laughs> sentences later, 16 hours a day. Like, <laughs> so um, what, what you very quickly realize with Beardy is that uh, I don't know if you ever had a friend like this when you were in elementary school. Of course, everyone But there did. was the friend who's yes. like, his dad was a spy. Uh -huh. yeah. And uh, and uh, that's why you never see him. And his dad is also like a karate black belt. And yeah. then like, and uh, by the way, my dad also like owns half of this town. You don't know it, but he really did. Like yeah. there was always a kid who just made up a bunch of shit. Oh. Mm -hmm. And so Beardy is that kid when they become an adult. Yeah. yeah. Okay. He has a Canadian girlfriend. He has a Canadian girlfriend. She's smoking hot. But uh, you can't see her because she's in Canada. Right he can't now. remember his name. Canadia. Yeah, he can't remember her name because you know he's he's got so many of them, right? Oh yes. Yeah. I, I had a friend like that who would pull me into the lie live time. He'll be telling a lie and say, "Yeah, remember we did this, blah 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 blah," and I'll be like, "No." Oh my oh, god! Like pull you right into it. Holy shit! Yeah, he's that good. It's kind of weird that you put Mikey on blast on the podcast like that. <laughs> <laughs> god, Jesus. Oh snap! How oh, dare you? No. How yeah. dare you? Speaking no. of hot Canadian girlfriends, Mikey's got all of them. He's got yeah. all of them. I mean, you're never gonna meet any of them, <laughs> and you're never gonna see any of them. But I guarantee they're so hot. Oh, they're so hot. And I they totally are. had sex with all of them, one hundred percent. Yes. Oh yeah, absolutely, one hundred percent. Totally, totally. Yeah. Oh god. So so anyway. Uh, he, so one of the videos he did um, was he, that he trained like Bruce Lee for a year and it nearly killed him. Oh, And yes. in that video, he oh. showed the results of oh. his, um, you know, his one year of training. <laughs> By the way, he also claimed that Bruce Lee uh, only ate chicken, water, and rice. Yes. Wait, he trained with Bruce Lee? Is no, what he said? like Bruce oh, Lee. Oh, like Bruce right? Lee. Yes. Because he, he wanted to do the kind of h human guinea pig thing, right? Okay, yeah, yeah. And uh, it, it's amazing because, uh, first of all, 
Uh, if if you have followed or gone down any Bruce Lee rabbit hole, you know that he did not eat chicken, only chicken, water and rice for those last few years of his life. I've actually seen receipts from the Peninsula Hotel and Bruce Lee ate all sorts of extravagant shit. <laughs> uh, and so, I mean, the, the, he was able to keep the weight off because of the cocaine, please. So, yeah. <laughs> um, uh, no, and the uh, the hardcore training and the heat in Hong Kong. But oh. like, you know, it wasn't because he was eating chicken, water and yeah. rice. The Miami crack diet. Is exactly. Fantastic. Yeah. But then what this thick beardy did is then he showed the results of his training. Great results, by the way. And of course, he was headless uh -huh. because he doesn't want to read. Because as a former MMA champion, he still doesn't want people to know who he is. And uh, he showed like what was like a, a very fit, jacked dude. And then he showed another photo from like another angle. Uh -huh. And when you look at these two photos, one, you clearly see that they're like, you know, two separate photos from two different times. It's not like it's not from the same photo shoot. Mm -hmm. But then when you look at things like the nipples, yeah, you yeah. go, this isn't even the same dude he's yeah. showing twice. It's a fist of fury moment. Yes. Uh, it's a fist of fury moment for, you know, so you're Japanese, huh? So, uh, anyway. So his nipples weren't even in the right place. They weren't even in the right place. They weren't even the same the right type body. of nipples. And they weren't right? in the same color. Yeah, the areolas were yeah. off, okay? Yeah. His uh, areola game is off, okay? Yeah. So, <laughs> areola grande. Yes. So then what, what you, what, you know, what stick doesn't realize is that you can do a reverse Google image search. So I just oh, took goodness. his so-called photos of himself after his year of training like Bruce Lee. And they didn't come back as McAllister? Reverse Google image search. The first one was like some fitness guru, dude. Uh, and you see his head, and he's like, you know, it's like some jack dude or whatever. And the second one was uh, uh, Ronaldo, the soccer player. <laughs> Christian. Mr. Christ Saul. Yes, Christian. exactly. Right? Yes. So it's like no. he doesn't even, or, or, may, may, or maybe it was some, I don't remember. I, I thought it might have been him. No, but we again. thought it was him initially. It ended up being another fitness guy. Oh, some other fitness guy. Oh, the thing is, right. they were two completely different physiques. One guy, I mean, and <laughs> the, the first guy was just like kind of one of those big, super jacked, bearded dudes. Yeah, like, 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 like a bit roided. Yeah, like, like, like a, a bearded. Like a, yeah. a, a like a body beanie hat on, dude. you yeah. know, like that. Yeah. And then the second guy was a lot skinnier, like a fitness yeah. guy, like, like an wiry as fuck, but yeah. like just yeah, not yeah. not jacked. Yeah. You know what I mean? But anyway, both of those people are not named Bernard McAllister or Beardy, and neither one of them was an MMA champion. So it's very clear he's he's a fantasist. He makes stuff up, but um, so disheartening. There are <laughs> but but what's disheartening about it is the sheer number of people who watch that stuff believe it and then when i would take aim at beardy they would get angry with me in the comments as if i was insulting their lord and savior which i i guess i was because i think beardy is their lord there's and no savior. guess about it you yeah. totally were yeah and it's and, and it's weird because in the world of bruce lee okay like people who actually give a shit about bruce beardy doesn't give a shit about bruce lee beardy makes money off of bruce yes. lee uh, but he doesn't actually wow. give a shit about Bruce Lee. He doesn't know anything about Bruce Lee. But in the world of people who know stuff about Bruce Lee, you know, John Little. All oh, right? yes. Matt Pauly. Oh, yeah. Uh, Steve Carriage. Oh. Okay. All these kind of people, right? They've been on this podcast. Uh, I've never once had a conversation with any of Bruce Lee's biographers or any of the people like into Bruce Lee. And we said, you know, I wonder what Beardy would think about this time period right here. Or like, um, I wonder what Beardy's take is on why Bruce Lee was, you know, going over to Run Run Shaw and teasing Raymond Chow. Maybe he has a take on it because he's not an actual expert. He is just someone who knows how to make clickbait videos. And the reason why I want to do videos on the videos that he does is because the sheer size of his YouTube channel means that there's a massive amount of Bruce Lee misinformation that's going out there. So it's not because I'm, we're jealous. We're totally jealous of his views and the size of his channel. Um, it's not that we're uh, haters. We are haters. Oh. He's a piece of shit. <laughs> so what you're saying um, is not the size, but it's what you do with it that counts. Exactly, right? ah, exactly. Yeah. Yes, yes, because he has the size. Yeah. He's just sticking it in the wrong place. Oh. Um, and oh. so this gives us the chance to correct the record because he's re pretty prolific with his videos. He has shifted. He's making shorter videos now. Because I think he's tired of, you know, he's like, I can get the same amount of views making some three minute bullshit video. Why am I going to make some, you know, three, you know, like some 20 minute meandering video where he's just talking out of his ass. Right. 
So this um, is tougher to talk out of his ass lately. But uh, uh, a lot of people come to me and they send me these videos. There are even people who follow our channel and for the most part, uh, followers of the Kung Fu Genius channel know that Beardy is a cock knuckle. Um, but they'll still be like, oh, uh, KFG, what do you think about this video? And the thing is, there's nothing to think about. The guy takes Bruce Lee footage, takes Bruce Lee photos and spins a yarn. And occasionally, if he's right, he's right by accident. And occasionally, he'll just put content like a Linda Lee interview on there. And yeah, that's a real Linda Lee interview. But that doesn't mean that anything that Beardy is saying is remotely true. Mm -hmm. It's often found footage, isn't it? Yeah. Well, I, I, and the, there's so many people think that Beardy is the one who found like the Long Beach International sparring footage. Oh. All right. If you are a Beardy fan and you're watching this and you think that he found the Long Beach footage, I had that on VHS in the 90s, okay? Slow your roll, okay? The Bruce Lee with the ping pong, and I know this is going to hurt if you're a Beardy oh. follower, was oh. a Nokia commercial oh. made in Korea with most likely a Korean actor, and that is special effects, mm -hmm. all right? Damn. Uh, Sorry, so, bro. yeah, I know it's hard, like, because people are like, oh, no, I totally thought that was Bruce Lee. Yeah, this guy here. Yeah. I'm one of them, yeah. Yeah, yeah. You know, if, if this guy didn't learn Wing Chun in my school <laughs> and wasn't a part of our podcast, he'd be a fucking beardy watcher. All 100%. right? 100%. Yes. Yeah. Okay. He has a great logo. <laughs> okay. <laughs> so, before we continue, just want to remind everyone <laughs> that the best way to support the Kung Fu Genius podcast is on Patreon. Patreon.com slash the Kung Fu Genius. For as little as $5 a month, you can support your favorite podcast, get access to episodes early, get subscriber reels, and for higher levels of support, you can even get things like special videos. Uh, I'm doing now a video series for our $15 tier uh, on the history of Wing Chun, debunking a lot of myths, doing deep dives. Uh, higher levels of support, even get things like the Yip Man interviews for New Martial Hero translated into English. And uh, the highest level of support, the baller, the indoor closed door student, uh, you get a private episode with me, the KFG. So Patreon, uh, patreon.com slash the Kung Fu Genius. And right now we have YouTube memberships. If you don't want to go all the way over to Patreon, you can support us right here on YouTube if you are in fact watching us on YouTube. And uh, we have three tiers of memberships. The lowest tier is I will respond to your comments because now they're getting a little out of hand for me to respond to. But if you are a membership at the lowest level, uh, uh, I'll respond to your comments. At the second level, uh, I will uh, entertain your comment for a potential topic for an episode nice. or answer the question if it's relevant to Kung Fu or Bruce Lee or Wing Chun. And uh, now we now have a $9.99 tier. Mm -hmm. And for that, you can get uh, the uh, some special videos that we're offering, like uh, the history stuff or whatever, right? Ooh. Fantastic. So yeah, and that would be right here on yeah, YouTube. Fantastic. If you guys are, uh, uh, you know, uh, loyal to YouTube and don't want to go over to Patreon. So, yeah, that's the best way to support us. Please support us in one of those places so we can get Mikey Dean health insurance. Okay, so uh, now I need to get off of OnlyFans. Yes. Oh, <laughs> yeah, yes, yes. It's not uh, please like help him stop having to show his long pole on OnlyFans. All right. So uh, here we are. So now let us uh, let us see start. it once. Yes. <laughs> uh, you can only see it once. Yeah. So uh, Dre right. has. Uh, loaded up a couple birdie videos for us. Uh, I promise I have not watched them before. Mm. And we'll watch them, we'll react to them, and then if I know, I mean, if it's not a fully made-up story, which is highly likely when it comes to Beardy, uh, I will try to then, to the best of my abilities, tell the real story or debunk uh, what he's talking about. So if you're not local to NYC, one of the easiest ways for you to improve your Wing Chun training is to train online with me. Online private training is tailored toward the individual and geared towards serious practitioners who want to improve their skills or knowledge base. I offer two private lesson subscriptions, twice a month and four times a month. Kung Fu Genius listeners use the code KFG online to get one online consultation lesson free with the purchase of any subscription. That code and the links are in the description below. Online private training is a convenient way for you to ask any of the questions you've had about application, form, theory, or even how to teach. Bring a partner to train with you online at absolutely no extra cost. I'll show you how to train with your partner online. Again, use the code KFG online to get a free consultation lesson with the purchase of any online subscription links are in the description below and i'll see you online 
right, let's go. All right, so are we going to get that title out the way? Yeah, so yeah. what is the title of this one? So Dre? this title is The Last Time I'll Ever Talk About Bruce Lee. 84-year-old Chuck Norris shocks everyone. Mm. <gasps> okay. Ooh. Wow. So that means that there could be a video 84. like, no, this is really the last time I'll talk about Bruce Lee. 85-year-old Chuck Norris <laughs> shocks everyone. <All> right. <laughs> yes. Okay. Okay, let's go. Let's get it going. Let's get it going. And we got... Oh, that famous sound. Welcome to Beardy, Bruce Lee Central. Yes. Ooh, All right, we got Chuck Norris here Chuck. doing some shadow boxing. Okay, Chuck. Do you see how he cropped the video because he doesn't want a copyright strike? Uh, so he crops it really close. Yes, All right, so yeah. cropped. I tell you, Chuck Norris not looking too bad yeah. for an 84-year-old. But I feel like I'm 48. All right, pause it for a moment. Okay, so... Beardy, ever the creative uh, uh, click, the master clickbaiter. He is the um, masturbator. Um, he uh, he shows a, a clip of Chuck Norris just you know doing some shadow boxing, hitting the bag. Yeah. Which I have to say, you know, good on Chuck yeah. at eighty four. You know, still be hitting doing that stuff. Still right? looks yeah. fast. Face yeah. looks very natural. Yeah. Looks like he hasn't had any plastic surgery. Okay. On none, uh, none whatsoever. <laughs> and then what? um, maybe but on then, his beard. Maybe on his beard. <laughs> maybe. <laughs> But then you're but, right. Or he, he had his uh, chest hair from Way of the Dragon <laughs> surgically <laughs> removed. Yeah. By oh, the way, if you ever piece. watched the old um, Total Gym commercials that he did with Christy Brinkley, oh yeah, Ooh. you will notice a lack of chest hair on Chuck Norris. No. When chest hair was a plot point in Way of the Dragon, Bruce rips his chest hair off, yeah. tries to blow it off, and it's so greasy and scraggly it doesn't even come off Bruce Lee's hands. <laughs> All right. Tumbleweed. Yeah, it's like a tumbleweed, but you ever notice when Bruce Lee blows it, it's stuck on there. And then in my mind, since I was a kid, I'm like, oh, that's some greasy chest hair right there. It doesn't blow off of Bruce Lee's hand smoothly, right? Oh, no. But now he doesn't seem to have it, right? So, oh, God. But here is a perfect example of the kind of manipulation Beardy does. He goes, um, this, uh, the video is called The Last Time I'll Ch Talk About Chuck Norris, an 84-year-old Chuck, you know, Chuck Norris. I'll, Nor I'll talk about Bruce Lee. An 84-year-old Chuck Norris speaks, right? Mm -hmm. He shows a clip of an 84-year-old Chuck Norris, and, and then he cuts to an audio old. clip which is very clearly a much younger yes. Chuck uh -huh. Norris. From the 70s. Yeah, so yeah. it just shows you right from the back <laughs> how manipulative Ooh. and what a liar he is. And his followers uh, I'm sorry if you're a beardy follower you're most likely not a subscriber to the Kung Fu Genius you're a fucking idiot if you think this is real there's something called the Dunning-Kruger effect which is people who are at a very low level of competency highly overestimate how competent they are in a subject because they're too stupid at the subject to know how little they know if you think beardy is making honest videos about Bruce Lee you are in that Dunning-Kruger zone and if you're watching this video and you're a hardcore loyal uh, Beardy fan, go f*** yourself. All right, so now <laughs> let's, uh, let's continue. Hey, he's not moving his mouth there. Oh, oh, plastic he surgery. All right, pause for a moment. Okay. What the no Jesus Christ. Wow. Jesus Christ. So, uh, first of all, okay. We are, before we move forward. Before we move forward, we are watching these beardy videos on Dre's uh, YouTube uh, channel, right? Yes. I pay for premium YouTube so I don't have to watch no commercials. commercials. Dre doesn't. And there was just a commercial for prostate problems, oh, and the guy was, was using a condom. Yeah. All right. And it said swollen prostate. Swollen prostate. So I don't know. I don't know what Dre's issues are. I don't know what's happening. But uh, you're, we're, we're learning not just about Beardy and Chuck Norris. We're learning about Dre as we do this here. His age. Okay. All right. So, uh, yeah. So it, it, it's like an old. It's clearly an old clip of Chuck Norris, and obviously you see the video freezes because it's not an 84-year-old Chuck Norris talking anymore. Mm -hmm. He's now manipulating, and, and the thing is, he, he, I'm sure if he were to even defend himself, he'd say, well, I didn't say that 
Chuck Norris said this when he was 84. It's like, yeah, but your title implies the that. The implication, right? like, uh, such a f- liar. And it basically just says that, you know, it's Chuck telling the story that, you know, he hadn't seen Bruce in a couple of years because Bruce was in Hong Kong making his first couple movies and then Bruce wanted him to uh, uh, come over to be in Way of the Dragon. Uh, there was a lot of speculation online that originally he wanted Joe Lewis. And he did not want, I don't think he wanted Joe Lewis for two reasons. One, in Bruce Lee's original conception of way of the dragon uh he wasn't even gonna fight a westerner at the end he was gonna fight a japanese karate man mm. who would be mm. played by a chinese actor chan seng because karate men um, bleed on the inside exactly yeah. they bleed they shift their internal organs and bleed <laughs> internally right uh and um and and so the original notes for way of the dragon which was originally called enter the dragon the chinese title mang long guo gong was the same but the english title was enter the dragon but then bruce lee decided to bank that for later change it to way of the dragon um, which by the way is not the translation of mang long guo gong mang long guo gong means the fierce dragon crosses the sea Ooh. that is the title right because he's from hong kong he crosses the sea to go yeah. to italy mm-hmm. all right and then it, because the chinese uh, traditionally were uh, very uh, um, hesitant to move into a foreign country, all right? That they would say that, you know, it's only the fierce dragons that would cross the sea and leave China. Hmm. Because the saying is like, mang long guo gong, which is the fierce dragon crosses the sea. M hai mang long, m guo gong. If he's not a fierce dragon, he will not cross the sea. All right. So that is it's, it's not just about like an ass kicker that goes across the sea. It's actually only a euphemism for anyone who dare leave China. Huh. All right. And so uh, wow, so it's so also cool. interesting that Bruce's name in that film was Tang Long. Tang being another word for China, like the Tang Dynasty and Long being dragon. So it was like the China dragon. Mm-hmm. You know, hence the dragon crosses the sea. Hmm. Um, but in his original that was unplanned in his original conception, he uh, wanted to fight a Japanese fighter at the end. And he didn't even have the idea of fighting in the Coliseum. It was just he was going to fight a Japanese karate fighter played by Chan Seng. And then I don't know when from his original script writing to the final product, then he decided to fight a Westerner and then do that in the Coliseum. Um, But that was not in the original conception. So anyway, now let's continue with what 84-year-old Chuck has to say. Oh, no, it's Beardy. He took his tape. He All right, pause it for a moment. Yeah. I'm so, sorry. He brought one of you. Like, I didn't see that coming. Yeah. Beardy's amazing because whenever, whenever he posts footage that has been on YouTube for eons, uh-huh. he always claims, one, that he found it, uh-huh. and two, that he's remastered it. Yeah. Even if it's the same, like, potato <laughs> quality from the 60s. You know, uh, like you're you're watching it on a on a digital potato. Yeah. Um, he still claims that he remastered it. Yeah, so his it. his uh, his remasturbation skills are not quite what what he thinks they are. Okay, well let's let's hear what he has to say. Well, let's see what what, what it is that he's remastered as well, and yes. which DVD extras it's been on. Yeah, exactly. Oh snap! Right. About his big fight with Bruce Lee on Way of the Dragon, and he actually reveals one of the biggest secrets from that fight. So here, guys, take a look. That movie was a, cost $145,000 to produce. It's grossed over $60 million worldwide. It's amazing, huh? <laughs> you glad you're in it? Uh, yeah, of course I am. Pause for a moment. Uh, yeah. He, he kind of laughs, but when he says those numbers... You know he wasn't getting any uh, getting any residuals on that movie because that's a Hong Kong film. There's no SAG or AFTRA or any of that kind of stuff. So he got paid whatever. I mean, if the entire budget was 145 k, uh, and they had to fly to London to do pickup shoots and they had to do all that stuff, you kind of get an idea like what Bruce got from that and what Chuck got from that. Now, uh, Way the Dragon was Bruce's first film with. Uh, his new production company called Concord mm. because uh, when when uh, Bruce Lee originally signed to to uh, do the films with Golden Harvest he signed a two picture deal which was Big Boss and uh, Fist of Fury 
And when he was done with that, he didn't have a contract anymore with Raymond, but now he's like the biggest star in, in Hong Kong. So he renegotiated and then he created his own production company called Concord Films. And then he went into a co-production partnership with Golden Harvest. So Way the Dragon being his third film was the first Concord production, which meant that Bruce... Uh, well, in the with the deal that he had with Raymond, as far as I understood it, oh is that Bruce would be in charge of the creative side and Raymond would like do the distribution and the business. Right. Mm -hmm. But that also meant that because it's his own movie and it's his own company, Bruce would get points from the sales and everything like that. So that's why um, he could potentially earn a lot of money. And uh, supposedly Raymond Chow was slow boating uh, his earnings from Way the Dragon and that was one of the points of contention during the shooting on Game of Death and then later Enter the Dragon mm -hmm. is that um, Bruce felt that Raymond was cheating him on the money from this film. Um, and I guarantee you, Chuck, while he got fame for, you know, and think about this. Have you guys ever watched uh, Chuck Norris uh, martial art films? Mm -hmm. Not like just his like, not just like his action movies where he's blowing shit up. What, what's your favorite uh, Chuck Norris Non Bruce Lee, Chuck Norris, martial arts movie. Oh, oh. martial arts movie. Oh, yeah. bloody hell. Oh, I mean, I think, think bloody, I think Bloody Hell was bloody, one of the movies. I was going to say, I, I, I was, I would say it'd have to be the Octagon, right? The Octagon, yeah, the with Octagon, Richard Norton. Yeah, right? Richard Norton. What about you? I can't think of any. Do you like Bloody Hell? I loved it. All right. I loved it. Actually, still, has anyone day. made a movie called Bloody Hell? <laughs> <laughs> bloody hell as bloody most people, bloody most people the say, Mikey Dean story hell. what's your favorite what's bloody your favorite bloody hell 4 uh. <laughs> imagine bloody hell 4 this time he's slightly perturbed yes <laughs> and the title is bloody the letter L and the number 4 <laughs> bloody yes. L 4 yes. what's your favorite Chuck uh, martial arts uh, movie martial arts movie I'm drawing a blank right now yeah yeah it's so good what there's did so you many. Just say? There's so many. Yeah, there's so many. I wouldn't yeah. say they're so good. Mm -hmm. right, there, you, there you go in a little, Wait, get a little Chuck, wild. Chuck's films aren't necessarily my forte. They're more like my twente. So it's like I don't really. <laughs> so, yeah, I thought he looked pretty good in the octagon. Yeah. But let's let's be fair here. All mm -hmm. right. Bruce uh, or Chuck never looked as good as he did as when he did Way the Dragon with Bruce Lee. Mm -hmm. Because when it comes to the martial arts choreography, your your dance part has a lot to do with it. Mm -hmm. And, um, you know, Bruce, I think, elevated everyone that he was with. And I think Chuck never looked better than in that movie. Mm -hmm. um, so, all right, let's continue with what Berta has to say here. Can right I just here. point out how good he looks at 84 right here? Yeah, yeah. 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 <laughs> now show the actual the footage. The fight scene is considered the classic martial art fight scene of, of all time. So it's nice to be involved in a, you know, in a fight scene of everyone. In fact, I got a, a letter. I've gotten thousands of letters from fan letters from that movie. And I got a letter one time. A guy wrote because there's a scene where I throw Bruce to the ground and he grabs the hair on my chest and he pulls it out, right? Well, of course, he does it for real, but I get a letter from this man and he says he and his son had seen Return of the Dragon 26 times. And he says, uh, he's like, they weren't selling ice creams in the stores. I, pardon me? They weren't selling ice creams in the stores. It's amazing. People have seen this movie so many times. It's unbelievable. Yeah. I've got letters where people have seen it 18, 19, 20 times and because of the fight scene. But he says, I, he says, if, did Bruce really pull the hair out of your chest? He said, if he did, you're really a stud. <laughs> <laughs> so I wrote back to no, yeah. no, for real. Right. It was, cat, it was the cat for... Yeah. <laughs> to think of how people react. Okay, pause it for a moment. Yeah. Okay. So, so far, this is the last time he'll ever talk about Bruce Lee. Yeah. And it's Chuck talking about whether the chest hair was actually ripped off of his chest. Mm -hmm. So, uh, I just want to put a little flag in here. All right. This is the bullshit that is Beardy. Uh, the title and the uh, thumbnail gives you the impression that Chuck Norris is going to say something interesting about Bruce Lee. Mm -hmm. And thus far, it's just an old interview with him talking about Way of the Dragon. Oh. Mm -hmm. All right. There's, there's actually nothing really of substance and nothing we haven't seen yet. Well, and this is the, other <laughs> the other thing is, it's, oh, yeah, it's the last time I'm ever going to speak about Bruce Lee. But because it's an old interview it clearly wasn't the last time he no, spoke no, about Bruce no, Lee no, no, no. in the slightest like yeah. so like this guy this guy is a master but Beardy never loses credibility with those idiots that follow him yeah. I mean real I mean these guys who follow Beardy it's actually more of the opposite they must be just drinking paint for breakfast <laughs> alright so let's, let's continue I'll be back home um, Monday I've got I've got four movie offers 
Yeah, I just finished another movie that will be coming over in the near future. One of them right, was pause it, can, pause it. Can we uh, scrub a little yeah. forward to see if this, if it's just the same thing, or or if or if he says anything of substance? He right. got fu- He got helps f- men get it up on command. <laughs> 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 no, you can leave that. <laughs> no, just <laughs> keep rolling. Yeah, just an ad like, for Dre great. to get, get it, up it up on, on command. command. <laughs> like, get up. They know their sure. demographic. <laughs> <laughs> it's too good. <laughs> Get it off! <laughs> okay, pause for a moment. By the way, did you hear uh, that uh, he said that he got four uh, movie offers? Oh, yeah. yeah. The yeah. Octagon. Yeah, Octagon no, no, no. I, th- I, think, I think one of them was for Empire Strikes Back. All right, let's continue. <laughs> Damn. In New York City at Madison Square Garden. And uh, we were he got a bob walking there. together to the hotel. <clears throat> In New York City. Pause for a moment. Okay, so right now Chuck Chuck is talking about that uh, Bruce said that he only believes in kicking like below the waist, and Beardy wrote or added a little subtitle that is clearly not true. Mm -hmm. But this shows you that Beardy doesn't know the difference between what Bruce Lee did cinematically Uh and what Bruce Lee actually practiced as a martial artist. Uh It shows you what a stick Beardy is. Okay, because he's someone who's like his followers, has seen the movies and thinks that that is what Bruce Lee did. His fighting style. Yeah, that that was his fighting style. Right now, of course, we've discussed before that um, Bruce Lee knew high kicks because uh, this may be the video where people insinuate that Chuck is the one who said he taught Bruce Lee high kicks which he clearly didn't. There are photos of Bruce Lee doing high kicks in 1960. Even according to Chuck's own admission, uh, Bruce did not meet Chuck until 68. Mm-hmm. So we have pornogra- photographic <laughs> evidence <laughs> of, oh, no. of Bruce Lee doing high kicks many years before meeting Chuck, which tells you one thing. Bruce could do high kicks, but for his own martial art of Jeet Kune Do, which is clearly influenced by Wing Chun, he didn't advocate for them in real fighting. Mm. Beardy writes here, clearly not true, okay? Because I don't think he knows that, you know, if Bruce were in a street fight, he maybe wouldn't do a spinning high, like he wouldn't do a spinning high kick. I think Beardy thinks that's what Bruce Lee would do as his opening shot. If anything, I feel like Bruce in a real fight would do none of what he does in the movies. Yes, yes. Specifically to give them something that they're not expecting. Exactly. Also, Bruce understood the difference between cinematic martial arts Mm -hmm. and practical martial arts. Beardy doesn't even know what a martial arts school looks like. Okay, so let's continue. (laughs) It's great. To kick anywhere. I do love that that little bit of footage that he put in the corner uh-huh. of the picture in picture said for preview only on it. Yes. I think he might uh-huh. have added that too, you know mm-hmm. what I mean? For preview only. Right, right, yeah. exactly, oh. exactly. Yeah, yeah, okay, yeah, right ever, yeah, whatever. Man, like, so, this guy. so we actually talked about this a few, uh, a few episodes ago, which is like, did Chuck Norris or Joe Lewis or any of these guys teach Bruce Lee high kicking? I'm pretty sure now watching this, because I don't consume a lot of Chuck Norris content. Mm. All right? You might find this hard to believe. <laughs> um, sure. But Ch- Chuck Norris-based content doesn't like often come up in my algorithm. But now that I'm watching this, um, I don't think Chuck is lying. Okay, yeah. I don't think Chuck is claiming that he really taught... 
Bruce Lee high kicks. Because first of all, Bruce Lee already knew high kicks. And this conversation very well could have happened between the two of them. And Bruce, being the, the sponge that he was for seeing stuff, like, hey, let's let this karate champion, like, show me how you do the kicks and the different angles and stuff like that. But Chuck may have thought that he was showing him high kicks for the first time. Yeah. Whereas Bruce was just looking at, how does this dude do the high kicks? Mm-hmm. Yeah. Right? Yeah. Um, and so it's it's very easy to see how there can be, uh, you know, a bit of a Rashomon effect where two different people have the same, the same thing happens, but two different people have a different, a different interpretation of the events. All right, let's continue. Rashomon. And Chuck was spinning round kicks and stuff like this here. And I said, look, Bruce, that's great. Kick somebody in the groin. Well, why not kick him up in the face too? Why not? Why not do the same thing? And so anyway, he started showing me the sticky hands, which are close in type fighting. Which, uh, was Wait, does his Bob have a beard? Yeah, does, yeah, it looks like his Bob does have a beard. It seems it would seem to be a requirement that Chuck Norris' Bob has a beard. Yeah, that's, that's his beardy right there. Oh, by the way, it's interesting what he says, though. It also shows you the philosophical difference mm-hmm. between someone like Bruce Lee and Chuck Norris. So mm-hmm. He goes like, oh, kicking someone in the groin is fine, but why can't you just kick him in the face? Because on the street you might fall on your ass. Yeah. Yeah. Because you might be wearing jeans. You might be because you slippery ass shoes. Because you might your opponent might not give you the ceremonial right of stretching before the fight. Right. Um, because it's way easier for your leg to get caught on a high kick than a lower kick. Mm-hmm. Uh, so I mean, like, it makes sense from a, the perspective of all kicks being equal. Yeah. But when we're talking about the context of, okay, this guy's really trying to do you in, you want to have a much more conservative choice of movements that aren't going to, like, if they don't work. It's always about what if the technique doesn't work? Mm-hmm. If my high kick misses, then I'm what? in a way worse position than if my low kick misses. Yeah. If my side kick to the knee misses, I'm not, like, crazy out of balance or out of position. But if my high kick to the head misses, Toast. I can be in big trouble. Especially if the guy shoots in. In Chuck's defense, though, he was probably wearing his action jeans. Oh, shit, you're right. It's possible, but I don't think action jeans were developed until the 1980s. Ah, maybe in his mind he was wearing his action jeans. And, and, you know, I I don't mean to be an armchair uh, (laughs) psychologist here. (laughs) But uh, allow me to be an armchair psychologist. (laughs) Too late. (laughs) Um, There there is a story that, you know, Bruce had like some... Bruce had a bunch of different heavy bags in his backyard. And he had like a real heavy one, right? And a, a, like one that was like, I think originally for football oh, players to tackle. Girth. A lot of girth. Yeah, yeah a lot of a lot Johnny of girth, girth yeah. right? And it was like for football players to practice tackling. Yes. But Bruce used it for his kicks because yeah. he was just so girthy, right? <laughs> and and there, there was a story that like he asked Ch- Chuck to kick it. Oh no! And Chuck did, and Chuck was wearing, I think, jeans. <laughs> and did a high jeans? kick and split his pants. <laughs> Okay, <laughs> so assume this would be no. late '60s, early '70s at at, no. at at the latest. That's the genesis of the action. The genesis yeah. of the action. Yes. Yes. Fast forward 12, 13 years later, uh-huh. for century martial arts, Chuck Norris has action jeans wow. where you can kick high and I always remember the ads when I, I always wanted a pair of Chuck Norris action jeans <laughs> I still I, want a pair of Chuck Norris I, 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 I would always tell my mom like mom can I get a pair of these Chuck Norris action jeans and they were a little pricey because they're not like mass, they're not like Levi's that are mass produced it's yeah. like you know, pr- to produce your own jeans in the 80s would be kind of expensive right yeah. and um, so what it was is you, you know if you ever look at the crotch of jeans the, the gusset comes to a T like yeah. a cross. And if you ever look at the crotch of karate pants, because karate pants are not stretchy, it has a diamond, diamond gusset. Mm-hmm. All right? And so what he did is he put a diamond karate pant gusset into, oh, or goose, I don't know, uh, uh, in, into jeans. So the, uh, the, the ad was him doing like this high kick in these like, Cowboy boots with heels on them, uh-huh. with like a you know like a that. like like, like yes. a button flannel style shirt tucked in. Ooh, I think he even had a cowboy hat on. Some Texas of them. Ranger, and he's doing the high kick, and you could see his crotch, and you could oh. see the diamond gusset. You and know. I remember I asked my mom. I was yeah. like, "Mom, I want these." And of course, when you're a kid, yeah. you grow up. So by the time she would order them for me, like <laughs> three months later, you would outgrow you're, them. Uh, you're a different. And size. I, I think, although I can't, I think then my mom took one of my jeans and put a diamond gusset in it. 
And then I could do my high kicks. Oh, wow. And I, then I found she's sweat. She's sewing a diamond. And then I found shit. sweatpants. Hey, look, you in, know, in my early teens, my mum used to help me vent my jeans so they were bell bottoms because I was really into like West Coast. He said vent his music. jeans mm-hmm. though his balls were sweaty. He <laughs> 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 like, yeah. like a little fan. <laughs> <laughs> she, low, she lowered the crotch, put a little fan in yeah. there. It was dicey, all right? <laughs> bell bottoms, gentlemen. She bell in, bottoms. She the invented the vent. He had little fans on yeah. his shoes so they go Yo. up the bell bottoms <laughs> and vent his nuts. <laughs> you know who would have benefited a lot from those diamond gussets? So. Oh. Your boy that tried to kick the leaf. Oh the, man, that's a that's a deep cut reference. Yo, yeah, that is like from leaf season, cut, leaf kick from season one. Yes, 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 leaf kick. I miss leaf kick. That was in the days before the internet, and yeah. that was the first time where I realized, oh, there's some people who do martial arts that just bullshit. <laughs> I because mean, everyone, everyone I had met in martial arts yeah. before was like a, an actual martial yeah. artist, and it was the first time I'm like, oh, this guy's full of shit. <laughs> <laughs> I, it was it was when I when I first moved to Seattle, uh, and uh, I, had, I already had my black belt in oh uh, in Taekwondo, and I, I I met you know one of my first friends I met over there. I, I was I was sleeping over his place. I remember we were watching the movie. Colors. Oh yes. And, colors, uh, colors, 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 right? colors. And then he's colors. like, "Yo, yo, Alex! Like, I got a friend. He does martial arts too. Uh, I want you to meet him." And then this guy, he pulls up. He's like, he drove like a Camaro, like a twenty-year-old Camaro. He's like, he's like the, uh, he's like the guy in high school, but he's still twenty-one. Yeah. Mm. Oh, All right. Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. That, that guy. Yeah. That guy. And then he's got. He's like the coolest guy because he's too old to still be in high school. Oh. And then he's like, "Yeah, man, I'm a I'm, I'm a ninjutsu expert." And, and and the funny thing was, I was so naive. I had never met someone. I, I was 13, 14 at the time. Yeah. I had never met someone who lied about uh, the martial arts they did before. Because everyone I met in Taekwondo, karate, or going to tournaments, yeah. or you know, meeting other martial arts guys. I mean, I met Joe Lewis, the yeah. the, the Bruce Lee Joe Lewis, when I was nine or ten years old. I, t- I took a seminar. And he taught boxing. Yeah. So actually, I guess like the, when I learned like jab, cross, uppercut, it was it was kickboxing for karate guys. Mm-hmm. And Joe, so Joe Lewis was my first boxing instructor. That's crazy. Okay, That's yeah. Insane. And and I knew that he knew Bruce Lee, but I didn't know that much. And uh-huh. I knew he was in a couple movies, but like the KFG what? can claim that his world. first boxing instructor was Joe Lewis. Um, and so I only knew like legit martial arts people. Yeah. And then he's like, oh, I do ninjutsu. And I, you know, dabbled in, well, reading about ninjutsu. <laughs> uh, but I have a pornogra- photographic memory. Uh-huh. And I was like, oh, you do ninjutsu. So, like, you like, are you, like, with Masaki Hatsumi? Like, like I, like, and he was, and he looked at me, he's like, yeah. Like, like, and, and, then, and, then, and then I realized, like, yeah, I'm not a ninjutsu guy. And I saw, like, Masaki Hatsumi and Stephen K. Hayes, they were like the main guys teaching ninjutsu in the 80s. Oh, yeah. You know, I, the other, I, like, I think that Bud Malstrom or whatever that guy's name, he was still another Hatsumi guy, right? Mm. And uh, no one no one in the martial arts world thought of Frank Dukes, even though he claimed he was a ninjutsu guy. No one said like, oh, are you from the Frank Dukes lineage? It was like, oh, Masaki Hatsumi, is that your ninjutsu lineage? And I just remember he looked at me having probably never heard that before and I'm not even a ninjutsu guy and I stumped yeah. the ninjutsu guy he's like yeah well in my school uh, you know we don't have belts we, we every time we level up we get a different color uniform so you start with like the white ninja uniform and you get the candy cane one yeah and then you get like the yellow ninja uniform and I remember while he was teaching me this because again this was the first I was getting my cherry popped uh-huh. in martial arts bullshit uh-huh. and I remember he was telling me this and I was just going like Wait a second. What? <laughs> the color uniform. And then a few years later, you watch Revenge of the Ninja, and you're yeah. just like, ah, oh, that's right. where he got it from. Ex- yeah, you know exactly, I mean? right? And then he goes like, yeah, and, and you know, we have like all these, he was talking about all these tests he went through, and how he had to block swords and shit, like straight out of the movies, right? Wow. And then he goes, yeah, and like, you know, like we all have specialties, and he said his specialty was kicking. And then we were out in my friend's front yard, <laughs> and there was a tree. And it had a branch, and there was a leaf hanging. And it was maybe, you know, a little slightly higher than head height for me. Uh, and, he, and he goes to kick it. All right? And it, I, I still remember, it, it, like, the video replays in my mind. 
uh, he does this high roundhouse kick. And his pants were like he had he didn't have the flexibility to do the kick. I'm a taekwondo black belt. I can tell when someone has the flexibility and the skill and when they don't. When they're doing a kick that's higher than their actual skill dictates. Uh-huh. And he whiffs this roundhouse kick and his supporting leg flies out from under him. And he just landed on his hip. Oh. Like f- like from about three feet in the air. Bam! Right? And then he got up and he had mud all over his pant. And he was just like, oh, f- you know, I gotta go. And he goes in his car and he fucking drives off. And then my friend looked at me. And then I think that was the moment that my friend realized that his buddy was probably full of shit. Yeah. And then I remember I walked up to that leaf and I kicked it. And I was like... <laughs> and then we walked back inside. <laughs> that is fantastic. You yeah. had the Leaf Garrett pants on, though. Yeah, exactly, right? <laughs> you had the right ones. All right, on. so anyway, let's continue. Yeah, let's we probably finishes. should move on to another beardy video yes. at some point. Are you sure? This one, well, this one. You sure? We already know it's bullshit. This one, but I want to hear claims about Bruce Lee. This is just Chuck. So talking. let's go to yeah, the next one. All right, let's go to the next one. Let's go to the next. All right. Here's me, the thing this is how lazy he is now. Like, he doesn't. He yes, he yes, yes. So uh, that's also something to notice about Beardy's videos. It used to be him just doing, um, it used to be just him having like an audio track over photos, kind of like what he's doing now, but now he's just like playing a video of someone else. What the f*** is Dre's algorithm? Well, it's it's not, uh, at least it's a little different. All right, well, so yeah. what is this one? Oh, Bolo Young claims Bruce Lee was killed in sh- new shocking interview. New from the 70s. He, he posted this eight <laughs> yeah, days and- ago. But might might I remind you mm-hmm. that three out of the four people at this table have met Bolo Young. Ooh. Yes. Ooh. All right. Okay. Let's watch this video. All which right. ones? <laughs> <laughs> if, if, if you know which ones, please comment below. I have no idea. I have no clue. Are we ready? We are ready. Let's do it. Hey everyone, just want to let you know Wing Chun Illustrated is now offering a paperback edition through Amazon, reaching a larger global market. And no, they're not ditching the glossy magazine edition through MagCloud. You can now simply choose the version of this magazine you prefer and the one with the cheapest shipping wherever you live. Order your copy of Wing Chun Illustrated today across 12 Amazon marketplaces with free shipping for Prime members. Go and check that out. Welcome to Beardy, Bruce Lee Central. Eat a bag of dicks. Uh, pause for a moment. Did he just say Sean Claude Van Damme? He said S C. Okay, stop. The, the spelling right there is. <laughs> he said Sean Claude Van Damme. Okay, all right. Oh, S C. Yes. So now it's Bolo Young speaking, but so far it's Beardy talking over him. Okay, let's watch. Let's Sean, Sean Claude Van Damme runs an Irish bar in Paris. Right, right, right. <laughs> I was going to say You're thinking sounds... of Jean Claude Kasugi. <laughs> <laughs> wow. Ready? Mm-hmm. Impact, which was in 1991. Wow, he can so use IMDb. 30 years, and they sit down and they talk about blood sport, double impact, and Bruce Lee. So here you go, guys. Enjoy. Wait, no, 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 no. Stop. One second. Wait, wait, wait. What just happened? No. 84 year old Bolo Young. Yeah. Was it like, either way. He literally did the same thing again. Yes. He just said, he's come out with shocking new things, and then immediately goes, this is a 30-year interview. Yes. Enjoy. Yeah. No, he's, he's not going to make any comments. No, he's full of shit. Yeah. Well, the thing is, he. but that's how clickbait works. You have to make something seem like it's new or never before seen, so you click on it, and then Beery's like, yeah, and let me just show you something that's 30 years old. I mean, it, he, he, it's, I mean, look, to be fair, we need to be doing what he's doing. All right. If if we start following his game plan, but we actually tell realistic shit, which may be the problem. Maybe his formula only works if you're full of shit. Yeah, because it's very easy to have claims that you can't, that you don't have to kind of back up. Know, back up. And since he never shows his fucking face, he never, he doesn't have any responsibility for what he does. There's nothing. He's just collecting. A YouTube check. Every There's no month. accountability. This is, this is actually even worse than the last episode where <laughs> he did, where he just had like is 30 it? seconds of then went enjoy guys and then had some random ass Shen Yun style music above a montage of footage mm. that he had 
found, found, yeah, found, yeah. and then remastered. Yeah, like, yeah. and it was all the same. And it's like remasturbated. All right, okay, let's go ahead and let's watch. Oh yeah. So he's just showing the footage of when Van Dam met Bloodsport, or, or Van Dam met Bolo Young at some restaurant. It was a surprise meeting. That's uh, Jean Claude's twin brother, Sean. Oh, there's Sheldon Ledich, the screenwriter for Bloodsport. Pause for a moment. You know what's really great about this? Bolo speaks about as much Chinese as, or as much English as Dre speaks Chinese. Yeah. That's what I was about to say. It's yeah. like, he's just looked at him just going, yeah. I have no idea what he's talking about. You see Bolo going there, right? And tea. Not, not only is his English probably not the best, but he's also listening to the Jean-Claude Van Damme speak English, all right? Which is like, oh, yeah. which is a hard number, right? Okay. All right, let's go. Who is it next? Pause. That's pretty funny. All right. But I like it's like it, it first was Bruce Lee, then was Jean Claude Van Damme. Oh, yeah. And I'm like, mm. <laughs> mm. <laughs> okay. Wait, hey, I'm a huge Jean Claude hey. Van Damme fan. And if Jean-Claude Van Damme had, um, like, and this is not to be, like, macabre or anything like that, but uh, had Jean-Claude Van Damme passed away after, say, Double Impact, and he only made those couple movies, he would have a legendary status totally. up there with Bruce Lee because he was young, good-looking, his movies were really fantastic, right? No, he didn't have that whole downward spiral. We would just now be finding out that he dabbled in coke, right? It would be the same story, right? Wow. That, to a certain degree... Uh, in order to achieve that iconic status, I think you have to you die. Have to die. Yeah, yeah, it's very rare that you get true living legends. Yeah, because you, you live long enough to become a kind of a joke at some yeah, point, yeah. right? And so that's why, um, to be fair to Van Damme, uh, he could never be the next Bruce Lee because he outlived them. Yeah. Okay? Uh, um. And also in terms of international stardom, uh, I think... Uh, I, I I don't know if if the mantle went Bruce Lee, Van Damme. I don't know if That's anyone I don't know if anyone else even picked up the mantle. Jo uh, Jackie Chan became the next big thing in Hong Kong uh -huh. by literally not being the next Bruce Lee. Yeah. So uh, I, yeah, I don't know. It's it's kind of weird. But then he says like, who is next? All right. Well, <clears throat> no one. Yeah. No one. And and this whole idea that there needs to be someone. Who was Bruce Lee before Bruce Lee? There wasn't. No one. All yeah. right? Because you could see uh, Jimmy Wang Yu was a big star before Bruce Lee, but Jimmy Wang Yu didn't make people piss in their pants the way Bruce Lee did. Mm -hmm. yeah. There was only one Bruce Lee. Who was the Beatles before the Beatles? It's an absurd... And who was the Beatles after the Beatles? Mm -hmm. Oasis? Are you kidding me? <laughs> All right? Okay. So, I mean, the, the problem is that this is... This is always, a, and not for me to harp on on our man Bolo, but it's it's a weird experiment that people always need to be like, oh, there needs to be someone new to hold the mantle. Martial art movies are dead. Mm. There's no one. There's not going to be another Bruce Lee. There's not going to be another Van Damme. These people were islands onto themselves. They each did their own thing. Mm -hmm. They right. were islands in the stream. That's that is what, what we are. are. That's what we are. No one in between. No one in between. How can we be wrong? All right, go ahead and play the video, please. He's got no idea. <laughs> He's like, I have no oh, idea. this is so great. How awkward is this? <laughs> hey, he did scissors right. He still beat him in. Okay, so a pause for a moment. Okay. So, so far, uh, the video promises that Bolo Young is going to claim that Bruce Lee was, was killed. killed in Hong Kong. Uh, we're two minutes into it. So far, he's just it's Van Damme confusing the piss out of poor Bolo Young, uh, trying to get him to play rock, rock paper, paper scissors, scissors. And Bolo Le it's Young is like, looking at him like, uh -huh. Uh -huh. I, will, I will murder you, son. And now we have cut away to an ABC spot for the Green Hornet. Well, right? I, think, I think he drops the bombshell at the end of the video. The All right, last let's second. go. Let's go. BC station. <laughs> to cut male menopause out of our lives. Oh my god, are you kidding? <laughs> to cut male menopause out of your life. 
also known as Manipas. They know I'm a young man. They must know. YouTube is, is brilliant. YouTube only advertises dick pills <laughs> and prostate exams to Drake. <laughs> yeah, seriously. I don't okay. get any of that. So now, now we have video footage of Bolo Young showing weightlifting with some music over it. Yeah, we're now in, in, in current Beardy How does Beardy not get copyright strikes? Because he's, he's not actually creating new content. Okay, now we're at the Fist of the Unicorn press conference with Sekin. Uh, Chan, that was Chan Wai Man, by the way. Mm. And uh, here's Bruce in Sai Kong on the set of uh, Unicorn Fist. Okay, so what does this footage have to do with Bolo Young? Bolo Young wasn't even there. But I think Beardy thinks all Chinese people look the same. Oh, okay. So Bolo Young is there according yeah. to Beardy. By the way, pause this for a moment. So I'll, I'll tell Beardy fans and Beardy something he doesn't know about that footage that he just showed. Um, that footage, um, uh, which uh, was for Fist of the Unicorn, mm -hmm. um, his uh, childhood friend Unicorn Chan, who is one of the waiters in uh, Fist of uh, no, Way, Way the Dragon, the Dragon. Yes. Uh, he's like a childhood friend, friend of Bruce Lee's. Uh, he wanted to become a movie star in his own right, and so he made his own movie called Unicorn Fist or Fist of the Unicorn. Mm -hmm. It's awful. Oh. And Bruce came onto the set and helped with a couple of the scenes, mm -hmm. but uh, wasn't officially attached to the project. And uh, they shot Bruce Lee, supposedly, without Bruce Lee knowing. And uh, that was the footage. And then what they did is uh, they inserted it into the movie to make it seem like Bruce Lee was in the film. And uh, that caused a rift between Bruce and Unicorn Chan in, like, let's say, the last year of his life. Wow. Yeah, that's, yeah, that's why you don't see... Uh, perhaps the reason why you don't see uh, mention of him being in, to be in Game of Death or in Enter the Dragon and, uh, you know, but there's also some people that said, like, no, Bruce Lee knew that and he was, Bruce, because it was supposedly a lawsuit against the production company, but there's some people that say, oh, no, that was all fake. That was just to drum up some publicity. So it's hard to say whether that was actually true or not. I, I don't know. Um, little known fact, uh, Betty Ting Pei, used to date Unicorn. And uh, Unicorn introduced uh, Betty to Bruce. Oh, wow. Uh, and was like, hey, hey, Bruce, have my girlfriend. All right, so let's go see. <laughs> no. <laughs> so, and now we have behind-the-scenes stuff. Can you scrub forward a little bit? Is he going to actually get to it? See where Bolo Young is talking about Bruce Lee. Yeah, I want to like, well, like yeah. I mean, this it's is, all like well-known footage with soft focus filters on it. Yeah, yeah, and you know, it's oh, just that's remastered though. Right, stop right there. Let's see, nope, yeah, still but, the same thing. But, but you see, but you see, this is the, how his the sausage of his videos are made. He promises something. He's just showing reconstituted footage. Okay. At low quality. All right, let's keep going. Well, Bolo Young is supposedly going to say something. All right, uh, let's play not. now. See if there's some. Oh, there's Bolo Young. He's yeah, going to say it now. Still no yeah. voice he's going to say it here. No? No. <laughs> oh my God. <laughs> we get to the end of the video, and Bolo has said uh, a big fat zero about Bruce Lee's death. Okay? <laughs> Beardy, you are a piece of shit huckster. Yes. And if awesome. I ever see you, I'm going to choke you. Not like in a jujitsu way. I'm just going to choke you like this. All right? Jesus Christ. Oh, wait. People I think I have one that's legit. Okay. And okay. we should know. We should, yeah. Okay. All right, let's do it. Oh, this is a good one. magnets and a simple alternator to generate nearly free electricity. It keeps your penis hard for hours. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So <laughs> the name of this one, Bruce Lee training with Arnold Schwarzenegger. Oh, get out of here. <laughs> what? Get out of here. What? Hold on a second. <laughs> All right. What? That's legit. It has to be. When did Arnold Schwarzenegger first come to the U.S.? All right. 68. Okay. Oh, he, Schwarzenegger, native of Austria, world champion, bodybuilder, moved to the U.S. at age 21 in 1968. 68. Okay. All right. I thought he moved later in the 70s. All right. Uh -huh. Yeah, so did I. It's a possibility. Possibility. Beardy knows Mike. something I don't know. Oh, All right. Know. Let's go. Let's, let's go. go. Bring see it. Let's see it. Well, what's going on, guys? What's going on, guys? Weasel. Here is Bruce Lee. 
Bruce Lee's home gym. Yes. Now, all of these contraptions and machines, Bruce Lee built himself. Now, why did he build them himself? Well, he had to, because they simply did not exist back in the 60s. Yeah, look at this clearly machined uh, Marcy machine that Bruce Lee built himself. Uh, to Marcy speaking, he might Bruce Lee worked for Marcy. He was, a, he was a metal worker as well, yeah. right? Yeah. yeah. Uh, pause it for a moment because he just said America and the United States. Um, <laughs> all right, so um, <laughs> gets a pause. Okay, so so he's he's showing the the footage of Bruce Lee's training equipment, which is from. By the way, this footage of Bruce Lee's training equipment that's at the Forty One Cumberland Road Calvin yes. Kong home, which I brought you guys to mm -hmm. in Hong Kong. But that footage. Two thousand twenty four like Hong Kong tour. Sign up. Link below. Yes. All right. Uh, everyone Do sitting it. here has been on the Hong Kong tour with oh, me. Yes. I'm yes. gonna go again, and yes. they're going again because it was awesome. All so, right, see you there. So the uh, uh, when Bruce Lee died, mm -hmm. all right, Raymond Chow, in a very shrewd move, uh, brought a, uh, a a film crew over to Bruce Lee's house before they moved all the shit out, mm -hmm. and filmed Bruce Lee's house, the yard, inside the rooms, the office, and everything. Before they took everything down and later used that footage in Bruce Lee, I think it was the, the legend or the, the uh, documentary and, and had a real film crew shoot Bruce Lee's funeral. That's why we have this like really pristine footage of Bruce Lee's funeral. That was Raymond Chow's idea, All right, which is like crazy. Right. Mm -hmm. um, interestingly enough. Uh, when we went to Hong Kong on the last trip, mm -hmm. we met with my, my good friend Sifu Wang Kam Leung. And Wang Kam Leung had been to the 41 Cumberland Road home and saw those things. And um, to, you know, I mean, it's not like Beardy found that out. It's like everyone knows it. But Wang Kam Leung told us that um, Bruce had all sorts of contraptions in his gym. And it was like not just the normal, like the Marcy machine and like the exercise bike and like, you know, the, the normal stuff you would see in a gym in the 70s but there were a lot of like weird contraptions for punching and for reaction and and these different things to like listen to sounds and like bruce was like very cutting edge in in and and very much on like an innovative trip in terms of like improving reaction and movement and speed and all this stuff and did have a lot of stuff uh that you wouldn't find anywhere else but he didn't make it himself he had he had other people make that stuff for him yeah, I mean, there's a, there's no photo. I mean, according to Linda Lee, Bruce Lee was very non-handy. Uh, yeah. He was not that. And think when when they shipped the Marcy machine from California to the 41 Cumberland Road home, he had to have um, he had to have two of his students. Uh, there was like was it, I think Bob Bremer and uh, Ted Wong mm. come to Hong Kong to put his put Marcy together. machine together, right? Okay. Which reminds me a lot about <laughs> me. All right, okay, so uh, Mikey we, uh, put my Marcy machine together. <laughs> this is true. Before we go any further, are we ever going to get that footage of Wan Kam Leung um, debunking Beardy from when Beardy mentioned him by name? The one time he got something wrong. Yeah, we, we, uh, I mean, I have the footage from our interviews in Hong Kong. Yeah. We have uh, I'll, I'll, ask my, I'll ask my boy if we can, if we yeah. can get it. But anyway, let's, let's go ahead and I want to see the, uh, Bruce Lee training with Arnold. Yeah, this is... Okay, can we scrub and see him actually training with, with uh, Arnold Schwarzenegger? Oh, God, do you see that uh, uh, Bruce Lee doing the iron flag? That is, that, that is a manipulate, because that's only a photo, and they've taken that photo and they've manipulated it to move. See how his legs don't move? It doesn't look natural. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, but the thing is, Beardy followers will think that that is an actual, that's actual footage of Bruce Lee doing that flag, but it's not. Okay, oh, up. wait. Rumors? That Bruce Lee talked to Arnold Schwarzenegger. Oh, yeah. There's rumors that they actually met. Now confirmed. Bruce Lee talked to okay, uh, 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 can you pause for a moment and just scrub a little bit back? So you say it's not the rumor. It's not the rumor. It's, it's the not the tumor either, okay? Okay, so uh, Beardy the f stick. All right, so uh, now <laughs> under uh, uh, a photo, there, there's a split screen photo of Bruce and uh, Arnold Schwarzenegger. It says, now confirmed, he talked to Arnold and trained with him in 1971. And where did we get this confirmation? Beardy wrote it in the <laughs> titles here. Uh, there's no. Uh, Beardy, wh where did you confirm it? Where's the evidence? Yeah. 
writing it at the bottom yeah. doesn't make it true. But Beardy's followers a bit. Oh no, it, it's true. It's, Beardy it's says it's confirmed. It's written on there, all right? Fucking idiots. Idiots. Just look it, at the font. I'm it's sorry. If, if, if you're a font, if you're a Beardy subscriber and you made it this far, congrats. All right, but you're a fucking idiot. All right. What's this say? 1973. Fact, I, and maybe I don't know, but you notice that, that that's mind. Lego font. Uh, it is right. Lego font. Is that Lego font? Uh, you're right. All right, go yes. ahead and hit play. 1965. Is that what that says? Might as well let go of the idea of the meth traps. Oh my God! Wait a minute. No, that's even wrong too. That. Oh my God! What an idiot! That photo of Bruce Lee where he paused. 65. It says 1965. Yo. Yo, Beardy, you piece of shit. They didn't okay? meet at the same year. No, it's not even that. That photo is not 1965. <laughs> First of all, look at Bruce Lee's yeah, hair. He's ripped. That's that's his hair when he was making the films in and, Hong Kong yeah. in the early 70s. That I can even tell you where that photo was taken. That photo was taken at San Francis Xavier when he went back to go visit. Um, so when Bruce, at the height of his fame, he went back to go visit his old alma mater where he yeah. went to high school. Uh-huh. And then in front of all the kids, he took his shirt off to show uh-huh. what a badass he was. Uh-huh. And, and that is at St. Francis Xavier. That's got to be 1972. You know who was with him uh, there? Bob Baker. And Bruce Lee, at this point, most likely because of the cocaine use, was so paranoid. He had a bag with him with a Derringer gun on that day. Jesus. Okay. That is to see 19- the kids. To see the kids. All right, hey, kids. Yeah, hey, kids. <laughs> what in the world? Yes. 1972. In the world? Not 1970. Look, Beardy doesn't get anything right because Beardy doesn't know anything about Bruce Lee. If you watch Beardy and you think he knows something about Bruce Lee, I have a bridge in Brooklyn I want to sell you. Also, you're a fucking idiot. All right, let's continue. <laughs> bridge in Brooklyn. Oh, eat a bag of dicks. Okay, scrub forward. Uh, is, is anything else going to come of this video, or is it just this? Wait, my source says... My so- oh, pause for a moment. Pause it. Because it. it's his source. My, uh, so now, under a photo of Bruce doing curls, it says, uh, my source says uh, there were more pictures of Arnold and Bruce training together. I will post them on the channel when I get them, meaning when he photoshops them. Yes. Okay. Yes. Oh. They don't exist. Okay. Yeah. Yeah, if there were photos of Bruce Lee and Arnold training together, we would have seen them by now, yeah. all right? So uh, how much left in the video? Because clearly he has already shot his wad. Well, he's at, a minute thir- at an, a minute 30 of an 11.45 video, he admits he does not have these photos of Bruce and Arnold training together. So can we just scrub forward and see what the remaining 10 minutes of the video... What are the contents no, no, in there? No, there are more, meaning he already posted oh, some. Okay, let's see, me- let's see what he's got. Yeah, let's see. Everything they told him. Let's see what he says. Oh, you want to see what yeah, he says? Yeah, because the thing is, he's, this is, he's actually having a thought. All around the United States, talking to bodybuilders, and he wrote down everything they told him. Diet, everything. Exercises, everything. Stamina, everything. Steroids. How to get a better stamina. Uh-huh. How, to, how to oil yourself up in front of a mirror. For, not for mass, because Bruce didn't yeah, not for mass. I mean, why else would you talk to bodybuilders? You don't talk to them for mass. Yeah. But he didn't like it. He said that it hurt his speed. His speed was not the same. Where, where did he say this? Can you provide a quote? Oh, no, you can't because you're talking out of your ass, right? Sorry. All right, scrub forward, scrub forward. This is, this is going nowhere. That is the perfect result. Yeah, you're a piece of shit. Yeah, 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 yeah. You know nothing, you know nothing. Oh my God, he's still showing the same photo. Okay, now we're going back to his re- training regimen from... He's talking about Bruce Lee and Enter the Dragon. Now he's showing his training card from 1965. All right, so this is, again, and now Wing Chun training with Taki Kimura. Again, as always, these... Man, I like his older videos better because he at least really committed to the bullshit. Now he's just showing it's Bruce Lee. It's the same Lee footage. It's all the same. It's, it's the, the same, same footage as the last video. All right, let's let's... Let's call it a day here. I think I've seen enough. Yeah, that's, All right. that, that's fair. I think I, I need to go to the bar and just cleanse my fucking yeah, palate. Yeah, yeah. I, I, I need to. I need really to. Really thought this I was going to be legit. One. No, I need to start drinking. Okay. All right. <laughs> so I can help you with that. All right, guys. Well, I hope you enjoyed that episode of the Kung Fu Genius because I sure as hell didn't. <laughs> uh, as always, don't forget to subscribe to the Kung Fu Genius. Hit that bell for notifications. Support us on Patreon or here on YouTube with memberships. And as always, don't forget that. I will see you next time.
word is, I'm a kung fu genius. Technique speaks for me, not lineage. Forget Jet Li, cause I'm the one. Many call me Sifu, but to you I'm Seagung, and I produce masters. You surpassed us, your kung fu stiffer than corpse and caskets. City Wing Chung is the house I built. Violate the gate and your blood gets spilt. Alex Richter, always the victor. Okay, alright, here we go. Uh, one, yeah. two, three, clap! clap. All right. Right. <laughs> <laughs> Brendan has the one that comes after. He's gonna <laughs> f*** Andrew up. Sorry, uh, Andrew, if that clap was off, it's uh, it's because of Brendan. We can yeah. do it one more time. No, it's no, fine. No, 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 it's no, fine. No, Andrew no, can no, figure it out. Right. He's smart. Closer towards them. Oh, uh, how's fuck. that? Yeah. Oh, That's Jesus right. Christ! Oh, Jesus three. Jesus three. One, two, three, clap! All right, so yeah. Jesus Brendan doesn't have the same ring to it, does it? All right, and so it was always him doing a, a high kick. Hold on, God, I'll scrub back a little bit and then pause it where it has that, um, where the it says, conf flag. no, where it says, no, 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 oh, no, no, where it says confirmed. You're going back too far, my god, Jesus Christ, I'll give him a D You're for effort, a, ladies. Such a Luddite, oh, uh, yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah, further forward. There we go. More, more, more. Oh, cool. There we go. Oh, 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 okay, God. let's see. Oh. What commercial is this? For travel, by the looks of things. Yeah. Oh, uh, you got off easy this time. All right, okay. All right, peeps. On this week's episode of the Kung Fu... Today's episode. On today's episode of the Kung Fu... <laughs> <laughs> okay, all right. Ready? All right, peeps. On today's... One second. Just... Oh. All right, peeps. On today's episode of the Kung Fu Genius, the... KFG crew. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Dre, I feel your pain. All right, peeps. On today's episode of the Kung Fu Genius, the KFG crew will be discussing video. Oh, Jesus Christ, the Latter day Saints. I'm not going to get this right. Okay, I can do this. All right, peeps. On today's episode of the Kung Fu Genius. All right, peeps. On today's episode of the Kung Fu Genius, the KFG crew will be debunking Beardy's bullshit videos. Because <laughs> there's a lot of them. I mean, the KFG crew will be debunking videos by Beardy's bullshit. You got this. The KFG crew will be debunking Beardy's bullshit videos. I really got to get this right. The KFG crew will be debunking, debunking lots of gems, lots of... What the hell is he talking about? The KFG crew will be debunking Beardy's... I said it again. The Kung Fu Genius crew, okay. <laughs> the KFG crew will be debunking Beardy's... <laughs> Why can't I get that right? Lots of gems. Lots of what the hell is this guy talking about? Too much beard. Too much beard beardy. It's, it's, it's All right, peeps. All right, All right peeps. peeps. <laughs> <laughs> On today's episode of the Kung Fu Genius, the KF Jew, J Jew, <laughs> the KF Jew crew will be talking about ladles, dreidels, and a bunch of hot nonsense. <laughs> the KFG crew will be debunking beardy videos. Couple of them. Lots of beardy bullshit. Too much even. All right, folks. Lots of bullshit. Too much beardy. And a whole lot of gems. Lots of gems. Lots of beardy bullshit. Lots of gems. Lots of bullshit. Oh, so close. God damn it. All right, peeps. On today's episode of the Kung Fu Genius, the KFG crew will be debunking beardy, 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 very beardy. All right, peeps. On today's episode of the Kung Fu Genius, the Kung Fu crew, the KFG, hmm. I just know that Dre is dropping a deuce right now. Yeah. Dre is dropping a deuce right now. Lots of gems. Lots of bullshit. And oh my God. Too I can't beard. believe it's not butter. <laughs> Too much God, so much fucking bullshit. Too much beardy and oh my god, such fucking bullshit. Too much fucking bullshit. So much fucking bullshit. So much fucking bullshit. <laughs>